Hello. My name is Tess Davis and I'm the Executive Director of the Antiquities Coalition. Our organization is dedicated to combating the illicit trade in ancient art and artifacts while promoting responsible cultural exchange. We're business leaders, former government officials, archaeologists, lawyers, and others who are committed to preserving our shared heritage. And in this mission, we have joined forces with a wide range of partners, including governments, law enforcement, intergovernmental organizations, museums, and art market leaders. We thank one of these partners, the China Europe America Museum Cooperation Initiative, for convening this important dialogue on protecting cultural heritage in the world's largest art markets. Yet, as we've heard from the distinguished speakers so far, despite groundbreaking successes across our continents, looting and trafficking continues to threaten cultural heritage while funding crime, conflict, and even terrorism. It is easier than ever to hawk stolen artifacts due to technological advances like Global Express shipping, instantaneous money transfers, and social media. And while no corner of the world is spared by these tomb raiders and art smugglers, as we've seen from recent law enforcement investigations and prosecutions, the Asia and Pacific region is under particular attack. The world's museums have a unique opportunity and also a responsibility to fight back. And as this event demonstrates, many are meeting this challenge head on. Museums across China, Europe, and America are stepping up and using their platforms to safeguard our past for future generations. The Asia Pacific's art market, as the world's second largest and fastest growing, also has an unparalleled opportunity to set the global ethical standard for the 21st century. There is no need to limit guidelines to those created for Western fine art 50 or even 20 years ago. And the region is in a unique position to reach beyond the art world to the wider private sector, to appraisers, conservators, shippers, free ports, attorneys, and of course the tech industry in developing cross-sector and international best practices. In recent years, there have been countless positive examples from the region to which we can point, demonstrating how museums and the art market are assuming leadership roles. Given time is short, I'll provide just two, both from the Kingdom of Cambodia, where I've had the honor of working over the last two decades. In Cambodia, which is rightfully celebrated for its Temple of Angkor Wat, fighting erupted in 1970 and was followed by decades of civil war. As we're seeing now in hotspots around the world, this conflict triggered organized antiquities looting and trafficking, which then bankrolled further violence. However, Cambodia survived these dark years with its rich culture and its history battered but unbroken, and today is coming back stronger than ever. It has launched an international and ongoing effort to bring home its plundered past through public appeals and legal action, and it's had great success as others are discussing in today's program, realizing some of the largest recoveries of stolen art since the Second World War. In a testament to Cambodia's leadership, it's treated this campaign not as a clash, but as an opportunity to build a stronger relationship with museums and the wider art world. The first example, Many joining us today may remember when the Kingdom's Ministry of Culture and Fine Arts repatriated a statue fragment to the Cleveland Museum of Art in the United States. Yes, you heard me right. Cleveland had first sent the piece, which was a larger-than-life hand, to Cambodia, believing it was part of a statue then being restored by the National Museum in Phnom Penh. Subsequent analysis showed it was actually part of another statue still in Cleveland. And the National Museum sent the hen back to Cleveland to make that statue whole and share this great work of Khmer art with the American people. Another example involves the art market. Following a voluntary repatriation from Christie's Auction House to Cambodia of a masterpiece that had been looted in the chaos leading up to the killing fields, Christie's organized an auction in Phnom Penh that showcased contemporary pieces. It then donated proceeds to local arts organizations. So instead of further encouraging a market for looted antiquities, it encouraged a new generation of Cambodian artists. Obviously, Christie's is not a charity, but while it may not, may ha not have financially profited from that sale, it did position itself well to become a leading seller of modern Khmer art, a market that is exploding internationally due to the great talent of the country's artists. 
So this is an example not just of international cooperation, but the fact that good ethics can be good business. Again, these are just two examples of what is possible, but I think they shine the light on a way forward that will help to protect our shared cultural heritage while increasing responsible cultural exchange between China, Europe, and the United States. I look forward to hearing many other examples from the other speakers today, and thank you all for your time, the opportunity to share our thoughts, and for the important work that everyone involved in this program is doing.